lethal and loud. This is the Scooter McGee Show on News Talk 1310 KFKA. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Gotham. Welcome back. Welcome back to the third and final hour of the Scooter McGee Show live from the CRP 4x4 studios. I am Scooter McGee. You can find me on the World Wide Web, 1310kfk.com. Ooh, you guys aren't supposed to see that door. Well, sh- never mind. Uh, all headlines will be up at 1310kfk.com. Add me on social media if you want. You can block me if you want. I prefer that. I have often on this show pointed out that, in my opinion, art does not imitate life. I believe that life is being preconditioned by art. Um, <clears throat> right now you're being sold a bill of goods and buying a bunch of crap when it comes to, for example, Jurassic whatever. Ooh. Yeah. Okay, enough of that. We're done. No. The Amber. Remember? What was science fiction for Steven Spielberg classic? Which I don't think is a classic, but okay. Jurassic Park. The Amber. The Mosquitoes. Myanmar. The discovery of a lump of amber that holds a tiny frog. The frog is 99 million years old. Scientists say it's exhilarating to hold these small fossils up to the light and reveal what they have shown coming off of National Geographic... Yeah, well, trust that source as far as you can throw it. But the image is for you up at 1310kfk.com. There it is. It's caught in the amber. It was, uh, this is coming out again. This is coming out of Myanmar. John Pickerel, story published earlier today. More than a third of the 7,000-odd living species of frogs or toads found in rainforests around the world. But a fossil record for amphibians for this kind of wet tropical environment has been almost non-existent, leaving paleontologists with very few clues to the evolution of frogs or toads. Toads have a different definition in nightclubs. (laughs) Strip bars in particular. Lumps of amber dating back... Oh, my time, the Cretaceous period. Revealing a set of four tiny tropical frogs that lived alongside the dinosaurs. This makes them the oldest frog fossils of their kind. The specimens include the remains of an ancient frog complete enough to be described as a new species. I'm going to chew this word up only because we didn't have it in speech therapy. Electoraana limoe, L-I-M-O-A-E. David Blackburn, paleontologist at the Florida Museum of Natural History in Gainesville, Florida, says we have a few small and intact fossil frogs. And the primary specimen of the Electrorana is a rare find. It's exhilarating to hold these small fossils up to the light and reveal the frogs within. In life, all these frogs would have been up to but less than an inch long, according to a paper describing the fossils today, this coming in scientific reports. Uh, It's led by National Geographic Explorer, 
Lida, Lida Jing, X-I-N-G, of the China University of Geosciences in Beijing. Recently, scientists found the origins of the disease that's wiping out modern amphibians. I didn't know Monsanto was a disease. I'm sorry. Lizards and frogs and amber are certainly not of an heard of. But according to Mark Jones, an expert on fossil frogs based at the Natural History Museum in London, the frog fossil record remains biased and patchy, but does not include the occasional gem like this. That helps us appreciate what we're missing, obviously. Lizards and frogs in amber are certainly not unheard of, but this one this old is exceptional. The 99 million year old frogs, there's four of them in this one. They came from the same amber deposits in northern Myanmar that have produced many of the amazing exquisite fossils we've been seeing coming out of that region. They got a dinosaur tail out of there. They got a couple of baby birds. They got intact bird wings, countless insects, bits of bamboo, velvet worms, aquatic spiders. Um, And the aquatic spiders, the spiders now in tune with the discovery of the frogs. The amber suggests, wow, maybe I wasn't hallucinating. Cretaceous environment was a rainforest. I didn't didn't get a lot of sun. The Dexu Institute of Paleontology in Chaozhou, China, acquiring the frog specimens as donations from private Chinese fossil collectors. The Institute had three of the fossils for several years, according to Zing. But they contained only frog forelimbs and or the impression of a headless body missing its skeleton. It was 2010 where what they're calling this as a miracle donation of this rather... When you see it in the camera, you'll understand with scale. But comparatively speaking, for the fossils found in it, this is a large piece of amber. And again, they're calling it a miracle donation. It has decomposed mildly, but you could even observe the very good skeletal, sorry, that word we didn't have either. I should know that one. Skeletal structure. And again, if you just go pop up on social media, 1310 KFK.com, yeah, you can see skeletal structure through this piece of amber you, just through the light. They didn't scan this. This photo isn't a, from National Geographic. This isn't a microscopic photograph. This is just a photograph of the piece of amber. It is lit by backlight so that you the the viewer or the listener can see so that's up there for you at 1310kfk.com uh lil weed i'm sorry it's the twitter here the lil weed i don't know what looks like fun but okay <laughs> 99 million year old frog so there that's up for you at 1310kfk.com social media do, 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 There was one other, though, from that science tech thing before we get to uh, South America. Well, Mexico, South America. Guys, what was it? No. No, we did the black hole and we did the, I thought there were three space stories. Oh, the robot was technology in space. Okay, thanks. No, so, yeah. Um, iPal, yes. No. If we could get, you know, if we could use SpaceX and launch those out, that, then, yeah, we, we can do that. All right, let's start south of the border and keep going. Mexico City, the 16th candidate uh, running for mayor has now been killed. Uh, 
uh, we're not going to rest until we can find those responsible for this regrettable act. You're a lying sack of crap. You're a lying sack of crap. You're a lying, steaming, stinking, nasty sack of liquid crap. The mayor of a small town in western Mexico running for re-election has been killed. I'm going to chop up this name, too. I apologize. The governor of Michoacan. The Michu... Mich... Oh... Michicoan. See, I was probably right the first time. The, that state says we will not rest. Yeah, yeah, okay. Governor Silvano Aurorales and Alejandro Chavez Zavala died while being treated for wounds suffered in a gunshot. Oh, gunshot wound. That's nice. The wife now also wounded. Chavez Zavala was running for re-election in Territon for a coalition led by the National Conservative Action Party. The party tweeting out, they demand justice, rapid investigations, and results. Again, 16 candidates running for political office in Mexico now dead. Mostly local candidates for local town councils and mayorships. Mexico will also elect their president and nine governors here on July 1st. Nothing to see there in those stories. Please move along. <laughs> Brazil. Uh-oh. For sterilization. Oh, good. Well, tomorrow with the anniversary and birthday of IBM and Watson and Hitler and Israel and Jerusalem and the Jews. Oh, this should be a good story. Claims that drug-addicted Brazilian women are being subjected to forced sterilization, sparking accusations of a nightmarish dystopia in a country where leading presidential candidates stirring up controversy with his own birth control proposals. An addict with numerous children, she had her tubes tied after ruling by a judge in Moco, near San Paulo, okay? According to a report in the San Paulo newspaper, the woman was homeless. The procedure was performed without her consent. By the time the judge's ruling came to appeal at a higher court, the mutilation had already occurred. Does anybody else remember Kafka's The Trial? I mean, we don't make the kids read Huckleberry Finn and Mark Twain or 1984 any of that crap, and I don't mean crap, any of that stuff anymore. Does anybody, you know, remember Kafka's The Trial? Wow. Eugenics or common sense? Way long again, 19 after, 11 at the bottom, we'll be back, Gotham. I'm glad to hear Chris is okay. What's the condition of his car? It can be fixed. I'm just waiting to hear from my insurance adjuster as to where. We'll take it over to Auto Collision Specialists. They've repaired my cars for years. I wanted to, but my adjuster says I'll have to pay additional costs out of my own pocket to have it repaired at Auto Collision Specialists. Stop. You pay your insurance premiums in good faith every month with the expectation that if you have an accident, your insurance company will pay what's necessary to repair your car correctly. In many cases, that's not what happens. Scare tactics like threatening to make you pay out of pocket or not warranting the work are tricks that will not be tolerated at Auto Collision Specialists. You can rest assured we have your best interests at heart and will do everything in our power to make sure your insurance company fulfills its commitment to you. Remember, insurance companies don't fix cars. We do. Auto Collision Specialists, we'll take care. 
Matt Rivette started in real estate just in time for the bottom to fall out of the market. And it turns out it was a good time to start. From day one, Matt Rivette had to do it right. Serve the client. Turn for sale into sold. 32 years later, we know market conditions will change. But Matt Rivette's commitment to you won't. This is a good time to get to know Matt Rivette at Pro Realty. List your commercial income or residential property with Matt Rivette. Call Matt Rivette at 970-356-1234 or go to ProRealtyHomes.com. What may be junk to you just might be another man's treasure. From stamps, sports memorabilia, silverware, or old jewelry, what may be junk to you just might be another man's treasures. Located at 2002 Ninth Street in Greeley, Another Man's Treasures can take these old items and convert them into cold, hard cash. Located at 2002 Ninth Street, remember Another Man's Treasure. So you think the Pawn Stars are in Vegas, huh? Have you been to City National Pawn? 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley and you're the Pawn Star. With great deals on commercial and industrial tools, electronics, smartphones, laptops, and fine jewelry, so many great deals and a constantly changing inventory guarantee you get the best deal in town at City National Pawn. Need quick cash fast? City National Pawn has got you covered there too. Monday through Friday and Saturdays, remember, you're the Pawn Star at City National Pawn, 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. The following program is intended for mature audiences. Welcome back, Gotham. Olivine. Real quick out of Brazil over a quick update to Kilauea. Kind of interesting there. Once the mayor's house went bye-bye, those headlines did too, didn't they? Yeah. Kilauea began erupting here now, pushing six weeks ago this Friday, May 3rd. Well, little problem now. Like we haven't had enough problems. Amidst all of the destruction and the stress and the lava flows and the loss of the lakes and the homes and everything else, lest we forget the VOG, volcanic, it's called volcanic fog, Scooter. The glass crystals. Well, now the sky is spewing down green crystals. Green gems falling from the sky. Those aren't gems. Photographs of what I'm talking about held in the palm of the hand of symbol at Aaron Jordan underscore WX weather group peeps. Friend of mine living in Hawaii right next to the area impacted by the most recent lava flows. Wow. They woke up to this on the ground. Literally raining gems. It's truly amazing. Those aren't gems, Aaron. Olivines. They're called olivine crystals. Common minerals found the world over. Finding them, however, because of a volcanic eruption is not something you see every day. According to the geologists at the University of Hawaii, the crystals are carried along with the lava out of the volcano into the sky. Some of the lava instantly cools in the air. When that happens, we know it is pumice. Transformation so sudden, the gases are trapped within the pumice, and they force their way out. That's what leaves all the little holes. Well... The harmless green crystals. 
as Kilauea now stretches into her second month of eruptions. Kilauea in the past, of course, has had tremendous influential forces on Hawaiian history. Hawaiians, of course, now would like Kilauea to take a break. I don't think Kilauea has that in mind right now, especially since we're seeing new uh, thermal problems here at Yellowstone. And we know that that lava plume goes down to Mexico. That recently discovered. But the scientists and all the people in the media are saying, don't worry about this. They're just little green gems falling from the sky. Nothing to see there. Move along, please. It is really sad, ladies and gentlemen. At this point, what people are claiming is the truth in the news. Especially on the global front where, again, a chance at the possibility of world peace and all we want to do is wage war. And I say we, no. There's, there's a, a, a significant group, however, now who just wants failure. So their agenda can be moved, quote, forward. The media continues to have Lingering questions on apparently what this word denuclearize means. And it's getting embarrassing at this point. How many press conferences and explanations do we have? The sanctions stay on till they're denuclearized. Well, who's going to determine that? Not you. It will get there. But the summit between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un has everyone... Uh, Now questioning whether this is history at all. Hopes for peace were palpable as they radiated out of Singapore. Not according to the news. Given the real fear just six months ago that the United States and North Korea were heading for World War III amid Trump's fire and fury rhetoric and Kim's nuclear tests, you would think that this would be a significant achievement in itself, but... The almost like dreamlike encounter between the President of the United States and the supreme leader of the world's most repressive state ended with more mounting questions about actually what had been achieved, who had won the most, what will happen next. This is really becoming embarrassing. Guys, in theory, do we have the audio? Okay, go with it. Oh, no. Guys, we already ran this. Sorry. Adam, not, I'm not hearing him. Is he not there? Oh. Well, then I will yell at you for the Depeche Mode. We'll do that later. Trump and Kim both got what they wanted from a propaganda perspective. Photo ops, including now one surfacing from the left showing President Trump uh, saluting a North Korean of military. Oh, oh, oh. He, he did that on orders from, from Putin. The reality star turned president, making his most spectacular made for television event yet. The Globe tuning in to see him pull off an improbable feat luring the North Korean leader out of the cold for a summit that none of his predecessors dared attempt. Characteristically, Donald Trump praising Kim Jong-un. Trump said he, we've never gone this far. I don't think they've ever had the confidence, frankly, in a president that they have right now for getting those things done and having the ability to get things done. Oh, oh. career establishment fell out of their chairs. The White House is using the summit to frame Trump as a daring peacemaker is, as he heads into the troublesome midterm elections. You're a lying sack of crap. 
You're a lying sack of crap. You're a lying, steaming, stinking, nasty sack of liquid crap. This is CNN, Gotham. <laughs> The carnival-like atmosphere in Singapore might also help to keep Robert Mueller's special counsel investigation just out of the headlines for a few more days. Wow. Yeah, the IG report's out. You're fisted sideways with your pants on. Up and down the line, all of you should be under arrest. But no, it's, I mean, whether it's, you know, antics by the Weld County commissioners, well, that's just politics. You and I do it. It's a felony. Uh, yeah. No, it's just politics. Wow. 50% of Americans' wages going now to their homes. Americans now are spending over 7% of their money just on gas as record gas prices continue. Americans now, on average, are spending $69 plus to fill up their tanks, according to AAA. The average price, though, is just $2.99 for a gallon of gas. Just a year ago, Americans were spending roughly 5.5% of their income on gas. Can't wait till it's up to 10. 32 after, 28 to the top. Well, we were two minutes long all night, so I'll have to head into William Moore Jewelers tomorrow and get my watch recalibrated. Get ready for the Greeley Stampede and the gasket change. Millionaires now controlling half the world's personal wealth. We'll get to that story when we come back live from the CRP 4x4 studios. More of a Quantum News Network production of the Scooter McGee Show right here on 1310 KFKA. As America's economy has evolved, so have apprenticeships. Today, they are meeting the needs of our economy in industries such as IT, healthcare, and financial services. In fact, these modern industries are employing adult, youth, and veteran apprentices, gaining a competitive advantage and developing the next evolution of America's workforce. To learn more, visit ApprenticeshipEvolution.com. Sponsored by the State of Colorado and aired in cooperation with the Colorado Broadcasters Association and this station. This is Dave Frazier from KWGN Channel 2 Pinpoint Weather. We're going to go partly cloudy, breezy, and into the 50s, upper 50s overnight tonight. We'll be in the low 90s tomorrow with a couple of scattered thunderstorms late in the afternoon and early evening. Then we cool into the upper 80s on Saturday with a pretty good chance for showers and thunderstorms, especially late in the day. And Sunday is looking mostly cloudy with a high near 80 and a pretty good chance for showers. This weather update is brought to you by North Range Behavioral Health. Visit northrange.org. What may be junk to you just might be another man's treasure. From stamps, sports memorabilia, silverware, or old jewelry, what may be junk to you just might be another man's treasures. Located at 2002 Ninth Street in Greeley, another man's treasures can take these old items and convert them into cold, hard cash. Located at 2002 Ninth Street, remember another man's treasure. Are you happy with your auto service or repair shop? Good. Stick with them, as we know how hard it can be to find someone reliable and efficient. For those of you who haven't found that dependable shop, here's a suggestion. Auto Tailor. They take the time to learn about the customer and their specific wishes for their vehicle. They won't assume you want X done when all you really need is Y. If the customer isn't happy, Auto Tailor's not happy either. Given an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, Auto Tailor is the smart, reliable choice for your vehicle. Call 353-3401 or visit them online at autotailor.com. Mental health and addiction issues affect one in four people. Most of us have faced a behavioral health challenge or love someone who has. North Range Behavioral Health Treatment Programs work. People really can recover and become stronger. They offer programs to help you and your family, no matter your age, in many Weld County locations, including crisis support services, a counseling center in West Greeley, and additional offices in Greeley, Frederick, and Fort Lupton. For information, call 970-347-2120 or in Southern Weld County, 303-857-2723. The problem with most gyms is, well, they're gyms. Double Diamond CrossFit knows what it takes to get the results you're looking for. CrossFit is high-intensity, short workouts designed to improve your core and cardiovascular strength. Double Diamond CrossFit has classes throughout the day with certified coaches. You show up, warm up, and build your better body, all with the support of the CrossFit family. Double Diamond CrossFit, on the corner of 59th Avenue and 10th Street in Greeley. Call 970-302-2024. And don't forget to ask how you can get a free week 
on us. So you think the Pawn Stars are in Vegas, huh? Have you been to City National Pond? 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley, and you're the Pawn Star. With great deals on commercial and industrial tools, electronics, smartphones, laptops, and fine jewelry, so many great deals and a constantly changing inventory guarantee you get the best deal in town at City National Pond. Need quick cash fast? City National Pond has got you covered there too. Monday through Friday and Saturdays, remember, you're the Pawn Star at City National Pond, 3301 West 10th Street in Greeley. Well, I'm glad to hear Chris is okay. What's the condition of his car? It can be fixed. I'm just waiting to hear from my insurance adjuster as to where. We'll take it over to Auto Collision Specialists. They've repaired my cars for years. I wanted to, but my adjuster says I'll have to pay additional costs out of my own pocket to have it repaired at Auto Collision Specialists. Stop. You pay your insurance premiums in good faith every month with the expectation that if you have an accident, your insurance company will pay what's necessary to repair your car correctly. In many cases, that's not what happens. Scare tactics like threatening to make you pay out of pocket or not warranting the work are tricks that will not be tolerated at Auto Collision Specialists. You can rest assured we have your best interests at heart and will do everything in our power to make sure your insurance company fulfills its commitment to you. Remember, insurance companies don't fix cars. We do. Auto Collision Specialists, we'll take care of that. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. Howdy, hi, this is George McFly, and you're listening to Scooter McGee on 1310 KFKA. <laughs> what a nut. Two weeks from Monday, he becomes the king of Kauai. Welcome back, Gotham. Can you imagine the entire population of Greeley on an island? Uh, I made a mistake by... uh, I juxtaposed Yosemite and uh, Yellowstone. I, I apologize. Yellowstone on the radar here. I made the comment about Kilauea. And I said accidentally Yosemite, that coming out of the Kalexit story, northern, southern, and regular California. I'll try and get to here in a minute. But that was the other update. So, yes, as Kilauea is behaving one way, there's been another anomaly at Yellowstone. Now, here's what's interesting. There are a couple of little stories here. First of all, Yellowstone superintendent officially learning of his dismissal after he was going to announce his plans to resign. (laughs) Dan Wenk, who spent 42 years at Yellowstone, the last seven as the head, announced plans to retire. When he did... And this now, okay, this would be the U.S. Parks, okay, these idiots. They reassigned him. I shouldn't laugh. Notified in writing on June 4th, he was being reassigned to Washington, D.C. This just three days after he announced his plans to retire next spring. Wank went on CNN. He's 42 years of a career and achievements, and at the point of career, when they know I'm planning to retire, I've never felt so disrespected. <laughs> you work for the government. I'm sorry. But having said that, there's a situation at Yellowstone, and I know many of you may be familiar with the Steamboat Geyser. She went off for a ninth time now, as predicted. (laughs) Yellowstone National Park Steamboat Geyser, the region's largest, and up until 2018, also erupting quite infrequently, often laying quiet for years. But after the past few months, she sprung back to life. She seems to be erupting somewhat now on a schedule, at least for the time being. Just after 1 a.m. Sunday night, Monday morning, 
The steamboat geyser sent boiling water hundreds of feet into the air for a ninth time this year. Steamboat had been dormant since 2014. Major eruptions over the last several weeks, which have nothing to do with what's going on at Kilauea. See, I don't buy that. I believe when one side pressure exerts, it has to equal opposite. It's got to come out sideways somewhere else. Kind of like all the crap I talk about about people on the air at night. In fact, the latest eruption coming as the Yosemite website was being published early Monday, right on time, seven days after eruption number eight. Like most of its previous 2018 eruptions so far, it went off overnight when visitors aren't allowed to go check it up close. But it shot off for the eighth time, June 4th. This during visiting hours. And if there's one thing to remember about a steamboat eruption, it's the noise. It's that roar of, the, of literally boiling water and steam coming out of the earth. It's incredibly impressive. Um, rocks now some baseball-sized being ejected with the water into what is being called astonishing heights. Now, if you're going to go out to Yellowstone, it's going to still require some luck to be there at the right moment and for the right eruption to happen when the geysers open to the public. Typically, it erupts around, or I'm sorry, if it erupts, it erupts for around a half an hour. Scientists say, just to be clear, there's no reason to worry that Steamboat Geysers' increase in activity means that the caldera, super, or, I'm sorry, the super volcano Yellowstone is about to wake up. I don't buy that either. There has been increased seismic and magmatic activity at Yellowstone. Most recently, the discovery that the lava flow at Yellowstone goes down to Mexico. But that story for you. Oh, did I? Let me look. I don't think we did. No, Kilauea was last. Yeah, because the correct. Oh, and Dennis, thanks. Yes, no. Dennis uh, shooting me a quick note, a message, excuse me, via Twitter, saying, Scooter, I think you meant Yellowstone. Yeah, you were right. I meant Yellowstone. Which was the follow up story why my brain was there. It has to do with, of course, uh, the new Kalexit. Hey, how's that Brexit working for you? So you really want to waste the time and the money of the taxpayers and the energy of the people of California for the next 10 years. Let's have another argument about secession. Well, there's another problem if we're going to have a discussion about secession. Who would, for example, get Yosemite? Oh. Let me guess. You want it for the mineral rights. <laughs> That's your concern with who gets this, the park. I see. You guys want a park? Well, Elitch's is going to be going up for about three cents on the dollar. Why don't you buy them? <laughs> Feel good about having all that taxpayer money stolen from you down there in Denver, do you? Good, 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 good. Hot enough for you? You want to go to Waterworld? <laughs> yeah. Who gets Yosemite? Top landmarks. Ooh. But there'd now be three Californias. I'll trade you a PC Yosemite and all of Napa for Disneyland and Santa Monica Pier. That's not going to work. But for the first time since the Civil War, California voters are going to decide this November whether to split California into three entities. California, Northern California, Southern California. Pushed by Silicon Valley venture capital investor Tim Draper. Enough signatures now to qualify for the November ballot. These are the same people who want to screw up, daylight screw up. Supporters, of course, say splitting the state will lead to improvements in infrastructure, education, and lowering taxes. You're a lying sack of crap. You're broke. You're a lying sack of crap. You're a lying, steaming, stinking, nasty sack of liquid crap. 
the idea of this passage is a long shot at the best, by the way. Voters polled overwhelmingly disapprove of the idea. So even if the measure doesn't pass in November, well, the proposal still has to be approved by Congress. And uh, again, you're wasting the time of uh, California. Well, there's 12.3 million residents. Northern California, there's 13.3 million residents. Southern California, there's 13.9 million residents. Yeah. Who's paying for this Bugatta? So, 40 plus million. They're not all going to vote, by the way. Let's, let's get those numbers real clear. Two and five? Maybe. Maybe. For a midterm, three and five. May, two and five. 1.5 per 5, 2.2 2 to 5 ratio will not stun me. States water reserves, mineral rights, the aqueducts, the dams, the levees. I'll trade you Napa Valley for the Santa Monica Pier. That ain't going to work. Ravaged by economic disaster. Economic recession. No, economic disaster. 50 plus years of liberal progressive politics being shoved down the throats of unsuspecting Californians. Californians, of course, moving to Colorado in record rates, turning us into California. Thank you, Boulder. Santa Monica Pier, it's the home of the first solar powered Ferris reel. Okay. You got the Hippodrome Carousel. Trapeze school, I didn't go there. But uh, that story for you also up on social media, 1310kfk.com. Okay. They're talking about the hyper rail here, high-speed infrastructure. That's called a boondoggle. Chicago, Elon Musk and his boring company now tapped to build the high-speed underground transportation system for Chicago. The first city to bank on the entrepreneurial's futuristic concept for mass transit. Project announced earlier today employing tunnels and autonomous electric vehicles called skates to zip passengers back in between Midwestern City's downtown core and its busy airports. Details remain to be hammered out, including the exact route of the Chicago Loop. Before we break ground, we might like to know where it's going. Ah. Elon Musk says we're really excited to work with the mayor and the city to bring this new high-speed public transportation system to Chicago. The proposed transit system consisting of electric vehicles reaching speeds as high as 150 miles an hour in underground tunnels as they travel, for example, to O'Hare. Um, I, okay, I'm going to guess. To say O'Hare is the nation's busiest airport is a lie. That's Atlanta. <laughs> But now, now understand this also. Let me just double check. I think this is, yeah, this is uh, Rothschild owning control and Associated Press. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't even think o- O'Hare might be in the top 10 still. Uh, top 10 commercial airports in the United States. I will be damned. Oh, best airports. Chicago O'Hare, one. Logan, Boston. Minneapolis International, third. Dallas, Fort Worth, fourth. Uh, Hartsfield, uh, Atlanta International uh, is seventh. Best airports, not busiest. I want busiest. Well, we don't have time. We got to go. Hold on. Busiest airports in the United States. 
Hartsfield Atlanta, number one as of 2016. Busiest U.S. airports by total passenger. Number one, Hartsfield Atlanta. LAX two, O'Hare is three, so they are in the top ten. Fifty-one after nine to the top. We'll be right back to wrap up the Scooter McGee show. Afraid, tired, and worried by the world news these days? Come to Trinity Lutheran Church and hear the good news of God's love and your salvation. Join us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for a traditional service or 10.30 a.m. for a more contemporary service and find the peace of knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Several adult Bible studies are also offered at 9.20 a.m. each Sunday. Trinity Lutheran Church at 3000 35th Avenue across from Home Depot in Greeley. Matt Rivette started in real estate just in time for the bottom to fall out of the market. And it turns out it was a good time to start. From day one, Matt Rivette had to do it right. Serve the client. Turn for sale into sold. 32 years later, we know market conditions will change. But Matt Rivette's commitment to you won't. This is a good time to get to know Matt Rivette at Pro Realty. List your commercial income or residential property with Matt Rivette. Call Matt Rivette at 970-356-1234 or go to ProRealtyHomes.com. Last time on the Hull Show. So far of this vibrant poll question, who will win the Mountain West Football Conference this upcoming season? I got CSU, Boise State. We got Wyoming, Air Force, Utah State, Fresno State, San Diego State. 56% say CSU. My Rams hooligans out there, you guys have been starting the weekend a little bit early today. Listen, I love the Rams. You know I do. But they have so many question marks. This has been the Hull Show Replay. For more or tune in weekdays from 11 to 1 on 1310 KFKA. The problem with most gyms is, well, they're gyms. Double Diamond CrossFit knows what it takes to get the results you're looking for. CrossFit is high intensity, short workouts designed to improve your core and cardiovascular strength. Double Diamond CrossFit has classes throughout the day with certified coaches. You show up, warm up, and build your better body, all with the support of the CrossFit family. Double Diamond CrossFit on the corner of 59th Avenue and 10th Street in Greeley. Call 970-302-2024. And don't forget to ask how you can get a free week on us. Cutting edge commentary from the edge of reality. The Scooter McGee Show is back on News Talk 1310 KFKA. The following program is closed captioned for the thinking impaired. Gotham, we're going to see all of you tomorrow night for a live Take Out the Trash News weekend Friday. We'll have Joshua Card on. We'll talk about South Korea. We'll get all the headlines out. Breaking news, Joy Behar is leaving The View. Good night, Gotham.
No, no. Be of good cheer. It teaches us to accept our failures as well as our successes with quiet dignity and grace. Son of a I'll get you for this! What did you do to me? What did you do? I don't want to live! I do not want to live! <laughs> Hey, the opinions, views, and ideas expressed on the Scooter McGee Show as crazy as may be. Do not, I repeat, do not represent those stand-up... I'm sorry. My fa- uh, last line. Do not represent those with station owners, management, staff, interns, or mascots. Take them with a deep breath of grain and salt. Just try your choice in that order. Even if Bud Friedman were still alive, he would probably never allow me back to... Well, he'd allow me at least to get to the improv in Tempe. But I've never put on an uh, explanation of course of absence. I'm looking to go back to pursuing my stand-up career. Can't miss you till you're gone, Joy. The stand-up world is going to have to suffer. America somehow will survive. Good night, Gotham. <laughs>